2022 represented a year of seismic change for Formula One and its approach to car design. The return of a ground effect formula and all its trimmings were developed to make the on-track product better for fans at the expense of restricting overall freedom for the aerodynamicist to explore. After a close-run 2021 season, however, 2022 was largely one-way traffic in the championship stakes, as Red Bull understood the new rules best. But now that the engineers have a year's worth of experience with the new rules, convergence will surely start to close things up. That's not to say that the rules are exactly the same. 2022 threw up a few curveballs as a consequence of the new regulations, particularly porpoising and bouncing in the early part of the season, so the greater levels of underbody downforce upset the rest of the car. So, in the interests of safety, the FIA has mandated tweaks to the floor geometry to stop teams from running their cars quite so close to the ground. And there's a few other tweaks too, so let's take a look at the key changes for the 2023 Formula 1 season. For 2023, all floor edges and fences have been raised by 15mm. The FIA had sought to make changes to the floors on safety grounds, as the drivers were concerned about porpoising and bouncing causing long-term damage. Lifting the edges of the floor will reduce the effectiveness of the Venturi tunnels underneath, but the reduced suctions should limit the amount that the cars begin to oscillate vertically. The FIA initially proposed that the floor height would be increased by 25mm, but unsurprisingly pushback from teams led to the compromise of 15. The diffuser throat height will also be raised. The difficulty for many of the teams will be in operating their underbody tunnels at a different height, particularly those who ran their cars increasingly low to the ground. There will also be more stringent tests to ensure that no teams are benefiting from flexing floors to produce more downforce, and the 250 newton load test on the floor's edge must produce no more than 5mm of flex, down from 8mm last season. At the 2022 Belgian Grand Prix, an aerodynamic oscillation metric, or AOM, was introduced to ensure that no team was running with excessive car bouncing. That AOM will continue to be used in 2023, and will be measured through an FIA standard accelerometer to ensure that none of the cars transgress the limit. Surpassing the AOM can potentially result in disqualification. To adhere to the modified rules, the floors will hence require a complete redesign for 2023. Whether that affects the competitive order remains to be seen. After Zhou Guan Yu's hefty incident at Silverstone last year, in which his Alfa Romeo was flipped over during his crash into Turn 1, the FIA has changed the roll hoop design and testing to ensure that it's more likely to stay affixed to the chassis in a repeat of that crash. The changes have also been implemented to ensure that the roll hoop does not dig into the ground, with a rounded roll hoop now mandatory. The new test includes a 49kN load in a forward direction, and a 73.5kN downward load to ensure a repeat of the incident does not happen again. Larger mirrors will also be introduced to improve rearward visibility, and some teams have already tested these in practice sessions. These will be extended from 150mm by 50mm to 200mm by 60mm. Drivers have complained for years that they can never see out of the mirrors, and so the extended width should offer more peripheral vision. After controversy over fuel cooling last season, which almost caught out Max Verstappen at the Spanish Grand Prix, the regulations have been clarified for 2023. Fuel can be cooled to 10 degrees centigrade below ambient temperature, or to a limit of 10 degrees centigrade if the ambient temperature is below 20 degrees. This must be the case as soon as the car is running after it leaves the garage. As ever is the case in Formula 1, new rules always produce loopholes. Although Ross Braun and his team were keen to cover off any potential sidesteps presented by the 2022 overhaul, especially those that could jeopardise the closer racing promise, they couldn't possibly cover off everything. There were two distinct designs that were outlawed following the 2022 season, Mercedes' front wing design and Aston Martin's rear wing. In the former case, Mercedes had introduced a front wing at Miami, where its attachment points to the end plates were swept forward, leaving a gap between the rear part of the end plate and the wing elements. This was introduced to recover a certain degree of airflow outwash that had been lost with the introduction of the new rules. Aston Martin took a clever approach to introducing a more traditional rear wing, exploiting the regulations that required a curved transition from the wing elements to the end plate to extend it beyond the main plane. The rationale behind looping the elements directly into the end plate for 2022 was to minimise the size and strength of the tip vortices produced by the exposed upper edge of the end plate, a key contributor to the dirty air problem. Even with the tight regulatory framework of F1, teams can still innovate, but the FIA reserves the right to ban those innovations if they could potentially create a larger performance loss for a following car. 
And we've seen how those teams tackled those changes over launch season, with Mercedes adapting its front wing designs to fit the rules, but retaining a similar philosophy. But it will remain a total unknown just how the rules tweaks may affect the competitive order for 2023. Thankfully, the Bahrain season opener isn't that far away.